as a kid, you know, I was I was able to draw really well. Um, I remember being pulled out of an elementary school class and taken to a little room where the school's newspaper was printed. It was just a couple of pages folded sort of thing. But uh, somebody was aware that I was a very good little artist, so they'd seen me drawing fish. And uh, they wanted me to draw some fish for the paper, so I drew a whale and some fish. And I think that was the first time I'd ever been recognized as having some talent in art. And uh, my father recognized it later. My father, of course, was a talented draw uh, drawing and talented painter. Uh, he even sculpted some, but he was always uh, what they would consider a naive artist or an untrained artist. Uh, I think he had a lot of respect for the arts, um, but never saw the opportunity to be an artist himself. Um, so I'd seen what he could do and was impressed, you know, of course, my dad can draw these amazing things and paint really well. And uh, So I'm, I'm drawing things like Superman and Garfield and, you know, things that might, you might see in comic strips. And because uh, that's what I mostly saw back then, you know, the Sunday funnies, which I don't even think exists anymore. Uh, but uh, so I was recreating these drawings and people were becoming aware, oh, Adam can draw Garfield really well or whatever. And uh, so... Uh, I think one day, I think that what got me into sculpture, probably uh, I had just, somebody just gave me a block of clay and uh, I don't even think it was related to a class. I think just a, somebody had a block of clay and I was in, I think I was in ninth grade maybe and uh, I'm watching some kind of Star Trek program and I was drawing or making what I thought looked like one of the Klingon alien characters. And uh, I, look, I thought it looked a lot like him. And uh, my dad looks at it and he's like, well, that's pretty good. But uh, you couldn't do a, a real person. You could only draw or uh, recreate the look of a, a monster or alien or something. And I asked him, well, would you sit down? You know, let me try. And um, it looked just like my dad. And I had no idea that I had this ability. I didn't do anything to train for this uh, ability. I mean, I was always drawing, but not realizing that like what I can draw, I can also sculpt. Um, and I got very good with it. Um, and then at some point later, I, I got really into ceramics as a general thing, doing pottery and other things. And uh, I got very good at that and uh, made a good amount of money every time I went to a ceramic show. I, uh, I'd always come back with a good bit of money, having sold a lot of pieces. I wouldn't always sell expensive pieces. I'd always just sell, you know, twenty dollars for a bowl, ten dollars for a plate, something like that. Mostly functional wear, um, but uh, I really enjoyed it. And then my parents recognized it as a viable thing to make money at. And suddenly I was like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And it was like. I don't know. It's something about me. Like once I find success in a thing, I did the same thing with painting. I got to a level with my paintings that people were really stopping and taking notice. And uh, I sold a couple of paintings. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. And it was it's just the opposite of what you really want to be doing. You, you should recognize, oh, I have a talent for this. There's a market for this. I need to do this. And uh, no, when I got into steel fabrication, um, I was making big things that nobody would want, you know. Maybe, maybe some strange star like Johnny Depp might want some big giant toys, you know, in his yard or something. There might be some character out there that'd want these things, but I wouldn't think that many people would. And it's not your typical thing, you know. And uh, but the challenge, the physicality of making it, and uh, I think that was the thing that drew me is the the challenge. Like with drawing, it came so easy. With ceramics, it came fairly easy. Um, but with steel fabrication, you had to have certain tools, you had to have certain equipment, you had to have space for it, and you had to have the physicality for it, and uh, the ability to imagine what this thing's going to look like as something else, yeah, reshape and reform things. And I got really into that, because that took play, the place of something else I was using. I was, um, you know, I, I needed a form of an outlet, you know, a, a form of therapy or something, and uh, the physicality of sports was something that attracted to me, it attracted me. So now that I found something that was physically as engaging as sports and weightlifting and uh, all this other stuff that I was doing, it was 
equally challenging in that way. So I was really kind of prepared for it and excited by it. Um, and then uh, my first few pieces weren't all that incredibly popular, uh, but I started making more and more, and I was never making things at that time that were meant to be popular. It was things that, like, I want this. I want to make a big toy that I can fit inside. Like, because as a kid, you know, I collected toys and still had them, and I liked the idea that, you know, I could accessorize, I could put an action figure in a Batmobile or whatever, you know, vehicle that toy might have to go with him. And uh, I liked the idea of doing it on a large scale uh, that I could interact with personally and uh, came to realize pretty quickly that other people enjoyed interacting with these things too. And when I started doing things with kids in mind, I just greatly enjoyed seeing little kids hopping inside something that I've made and enjoying it. And um, I've seen photos of uh, my work where it's been placed in front of libraries where kids have just stopped inside my sculpture and read books in the sculpture. And people I don't know from states I've only been in one time, <laughs> places like this, I've, I've seen photos from people enjoying the work that I don't even know them. I've never met them. I was like, wow, this is kind of nice. People I don't know enjoy my work. And there's something about it like, you know, when it's a friend or something or a family member, they're kind of indebted to say, that's good. I like that. You know, I didn't get a lot of praise from my parents, but I got some praise. And I don't think I ever had anything pinned up on the by a magnet on the refrigerator like some kids say they do, but uh, but that sort of thing. You know, I'm, I'm used to that concept, but when people you don't know start telling you this is good, like, oh, well. Yeah, there's yeah. no subtext to it. Exactly. They just, they enjoy the, the thing yeah. itself. Yeah, so it means a lot. Thing. Yeah. That's really cool. So do you think that, like, when you started to see them enjoy this, that kind of locked you into your path? And that that fed into, like, God, you know, I can make people yeah. feel that's share some of my toys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a big part of it for sure. The other aspect of it is, it a, it's a, it, like I said before, it's an outlet too. So I'm, I'm bringing some sort of joy or some sort of positive interaction from people. Uh, but I'm also uh, expressing some point, or some thought that I have had, and I'm just now bringing it to the bringing it forward, you know, it's something that, like, especially I've noticed it with uh, wanting to start a family and then getting to know my children and things like that, like, it, that stuff brings itself to the forefront while I'm making the piece, and by the time I've finished the piece, I fully realized what this was meant for and why I'm doing this. And I love the idea that uh, at some point people will be using it as a... Uh, as a as a marker, you're like oh, turned by the big red sculpture, you know, like oh, have you seen that thing? And like, it's, yeah, yeah. and uh, I love that it's going to be affecting other people's lives in a positive way. Hopefully, uh, maybe it'll inspire something. Uh, but I do think, oh, I do know that it's going to be among the first of new sculptures coming in. And I think that once everybody in this community, or most people in this community, start accepting and appreciating those. I think they want more, you know, and this, you never know. This could lead to something a lot bigger. I think about my, my visit to uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. I was doing an interview out there for a position that I was interested in. And, uh, you know, there's more sculpture per per foot, I think, you know, there than anywhere else in, in America. And it's like every time you turn a corner, like there's another giant calder piece. and uh, recognizing that the symbol for that town is a large, I believe, pink or red, I think it's pink, uh, a Calder sculpture. And like, I could see that happening here eventually. Like, as the town grows and as the collection of public art pieces grow, this, will, this town will be known for art.